Here at MTDC and C today, we are going to talk about a patented technology. I know when you guys get to learn about something new that no one else has, it's important to your shops. We're going to talk about the Achilles heel of the bar feed industry that is now being remedied. And if a god can be taken down, so can you. So Edge Technology is going to help you in your shop. Dan, let's talk about the overview of what you've created and why, because it's been a few years in the making. Everyone's been thinking about how sure. to do it, sure. but you guys found the solution first. Sure, yeah, FMB, uh, our German maker uh, over in Europe, really worked on this through uh, COVID, developing a product that can help control bar stock better in the Swiss world where the lathes, the stroke of the lathe is getting longer. We have longer sheet metal gaps, really just more space between outside of the bar feeder and inside of the lathe itself is really the Achilles heel zone that you talked about where, let's be honest, there's a little bit of weakness between that link between outside of the bar feeder and inside of the lathe. Really, really the first revolutionary technical change to bar feeding in probably 20 years that will address this issue. Had we thought of this a long time ago, this would have been the very first thing that we all did, correct, right? Correct, yeah, and that's kind of the way I've been explaining it is, uh, you know, we'll get into later about the telescopic nose, which is kind of the old way we were doing it, and now we've got kind of a more revolutionary way. However, it really kind of simplifies how we control the bar in the bar feeder and in the lathe itself to where I've been saying, if you were to, to design a bar feeder today, not with any memory or any history of knowing what it would look like, it would look like this machine. And the simplicity of it, I think, will speak to that. Let's walk over to the side and get into the details of how this can help, this patented technology. But sure. as we walk over there, mm -hmm. let's shoot back in time a little bit and see what the standard evolution of the bar feed has been yeah. as well and talk about that. Yeah, sure. So, Dan, this is the more traditional style bar yeah. feed. That It's universally traditional amongst all bar feed. Correct. Can you tell me how it works and some of the, as you've described it, Achilles heel sure. of this type of mechanism? Sure. So, we uh, this is kind of the transition zone between outside of the bar feeder and inside of the lathe spindle here, right? Well, there's been so much change in the Swiss lathe world where strokes have gotten longer, sheet, sheet metal gaps have gotten further. We've really had to develop products to span a long distance. This is why we've developed the RS now. However, traditionally, this sliding, head, this sliding tube is how we move with the sliding headstock of the lathe. But like I said, that transition zone's gotten so long, the gap between outside of the bar feeder and inside of the lathe itself is really longer than ideal. And we call it the jump rope effect, mm -hmm. where there's a really hard time to support the bar through outside and inside. And it's not an edge or an FMB thing, it's a bar feed concept thing, which is why we're super excited about this RS technology, where we're eliminating all of this and we have a much more physical and direct connection to the lathe itself. Well, let's get back to that RS technology and talk about why that patent is going to help everyone in the bar feed world. For sure. All right, Dan, well, we've talked about the old. Yeah. We're going to talk about the new. Definitely. But we want to get into the details of that because sure. there are a lot of components that allow that, that jump rope, Achilles heel, yeah. tail whip as I know it to be, yeah. to be removed. And I think right. about this as, as the vibration, the chatter, the tool reduction, the overall speed of, of a turning center right. that can't go as fast as it might want to go. Right. All of this is incorporated in this new technology, sure. right? Sure. And that's really, we'll get into specifically how it works. But really the reason why we are releasing this is to maximize RPM in the lathe. I mean, that's really what we're looking for at the end of the day, and that's what the lathe is de designed for. So we don't ever want to hear that the bar feeder is actually limiting the RPMs of the lathe itself. It's kind of defeating the purpose. So what we've added to this is what we're going to call our, gu our guide module, and this whole unit itself is actually going to slide with the sliding headstock of the Swiss lathe. Not only are we moving with it, we're physically connected with a set of roller wheels or an MAVD, that will surround the bar and hold it and actually move and transition back and forth with the sliding headstock of the lathe. And what we were looking at just a minute ago, all of what I'm looking at the inside was actually on the outside before, yep. and now we're yep. just creating a closer, uh, a tighter contact sure. area to hold the bar, sure. and we're moving closer to the machine Correct. as well. How's Correct. that work? Very much so. So like you said, the, the telescopic nose that we just looked at, we're probably gaining 12 inches of room towards the lathe itself, reducing the gap between unsupported area outside of the bar feeder, inside of the lathe spindle. Obviously, the closer, the shorter you can make that difference distance, uh, you're gonna have a lot more control over the bar, 
and uh, increase your RPMs for sure. Let's talk a little bit about the material world as well mm -hmm. because there are certainly differences in uh, how malleable some material might be, yep. softer the material yep. versus a harder material, where we might have more of that jump sure. rope effect as sure. you described. Right, and, and we, we sympathize at the end of the day because it is a daily conversation we have about quality of material that our end users are earning. Look, we understand at the end of the day, customers are gonna buy the material that they can get to, to make the job, to finish the job, whether that be price or availability, delivery, they're going to get what they're going to get, right? We can't change that. We'd love to, but we can't. So they're gonna run what they're gonna run. Having this smaller footprint, having more control over the bar itself, I don't wanna say is going to allow you to buy less quality material. However, any reduction in vibration is gonna help you run what material it is you're able to get. I would like to reemphasize that for Dan as well. Please don't just start buying less quality material because you might be able to now. Stick with the quality you like and let's try and get as perfect as we can because yeah. what does that poor quality material do in your everyday bar feed situation? A lot of times that can turn into scrap and you do mm -hmm. not want scrap no matter right. how precise some of your machines are. So I reemphasize that because let's try our best to get that try, good material. Try. Please try. Please try. <laughs> because that's your responsibility. That's yeah. the responsibility of the CNC machines. Sure. And, and most people are going to try their very best in, in many situations to, I, I'm going to say it, I have to say it, I know we're all doing it, cut corners where we can yep. to save costs. And sometimes yep. that comes from the material. Right. And, and we're not using that as a selling point, as buy cheaper material. We're just kind of admitting this is what people are doing already. Let's invent something that's gonna help them do what they're doing already better, maximize RPM in your lathe, make better parts, better surface finish, better quality.